From what you say at the time of the first restriction, the tendency to be alienated from the Creator is already present way before anything that we would regard as creation has come to exist. That's what he wants to draw for you now. That's what he wants to draw for you now. Where we actually in there, the drawing, it talks about uh, raw desires long before they are connected to a person. Because the desire to receive itself is completely dependent, pleasure dependent. And even when we say that it can do all kinds of things, reject or whatever, in order to be resemble the Creator, it has to have a part of the Creator In order to resemble the Creator, it has to have a part of the Creator so what we have to do is to, to instill the property of the Creator into the will to receive by force. Okay. And that part would be called soul. But that's still far from where we are. Yes, but so now to move on to God and I suppose every... Uh, Every first year theologian is always warned not to speak or think of God as a person or as a human being enlarged. And that is how we all do tend to think of God as a human being, however vastly enlarged, with the same problem. No. Now, when we, when we are speaking here of uh, God giving, and me receiving, I'm not really receiving, I'm giving because I'm fulfilling the ability of the Creator to give a gift to me. So I'm giving to the Creator. I presume that's accurate. So uh, our, what I'm coming to say is you know, we know religion has nothing to do with God. Religion is a, a psychiatry, it's a, it's a therapy and a poor therapy. It's a business, it's a business. but it has nothing to do with God. We all agree on that. However, when we do come to speak of God now in this tradition, which has nothing to do with religion, are you saying that there is a need in God? In Gematria, which is the Hebrew, uh, the numerology of Hebrew letters, uh, the value of the word God, Elo Elo Elohim, and nature is the same. In other words, the whole of nature equals God. This is or, God. Or you might call it the encompassing law of reality. This is what we call God. It's an unchanging law. It operates on every item in reality. Creature. That's Nivra. That's great. This law operates nature, in order to bring it to equivalence with the Creator, to, make, to equalize it. So the Creator and will merge to the point of no, well, no lack of difference between them. So what's so special about it? You, it it's God. It can do it. You know, it can do it. But there is... There. The thing is, the creature has to be like <coughs> its own desire to be like the creator. <laughs> to know its own nature. The creator's nature. See the oppositeness between them. Determine that its own nature is bad. And to see the creator as the absolute good. 
לראות עד שהוא לא מסוגל לתקן את עצמו, itself, לבקש מהבורא כוחות לזה, it, לחייב את הבורא לתקן את עצמו. וכל פעם להכתיב כאילו לבורא, קח תן לי, קח תעשה לי, קח תתקן. למה? כי בזה הוא לומד איך להיות דומה לבורא. אבל הבורא חייב לתת כדי שהוא יהיה בורא. הבורא זה חוק. הוא לא משתנה. זה משחק בתוך האדם עם משהו אבסולוטי, עם סטנדרט, שנקרא בורא, ועם משהו כלפי זה. absolute for the creator and with a person with, with respect to it. And it's a postulate that it's an unchanging law. There's a postulate. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my third is a far lower level question. Uh, you did say yesterday that Abraham was the one who first discovered the principles of Kabbalah, which is about, what, 38, 3,900 years ago. It was the 1800 BC. Yes. Which is very recent in the history of the human race. Yes. כן, אתה יודע? כן, אבל זה לא נכון. לפני זה היה ככה, סליחה, לפני זה היה האדם הראשון. האדם זה באמת היה חי על פני האדמות אדם. זה היה האיש הראשון שבו התעורר רצון לאלוקות. זאת אומרת, אם אנחנו ניקח את הזמן... אז היו אלפי שנה בני אדם, וכאן היה מישהו שקראו לו אדם, במה הוא היה מיוחד, שפעם ראשונה בו, בתוך הלב שלו, התחילה הנקודה שבלב. אנחנו דיברנו שבתוך רצון לקבל חייב להיות איזה פניצוץ מהבורא. of the creator in every person. That's, which is the beginning of the soul. So he was the one, who, the first one who felt it. He 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 felt it. The heart feels the desires for this world through the five senses. And he seemingly felt through the sixth sense, the desire for the creator. הקטן הזה שנקרא, שנקרא נשמה. That's the beginning of the vessel called the soul. Mm-hmm. What happened to his tradition? מה קרה למסורת שלו? Uh, גם לו יש ספר. He, he also wrote a book. שנקרא רזיאל המלאך. It's called the angel Raziel. מאוד קשה. It is a very very difficult book. Uh, כתוב בשפה, ברמזים uh, מאוד קשים. It's written in all very very... Uh, difficult עברית זה תוצאה מהשפה שהייתה שם בפרס הקדומה. ושם הייתה שפה דומה לזה. ארמית ועברית הם כאילו כמעט אותו דבר, ארמית קצת יותר עתיק. אבל יכול להיות שלפני זה היה עוד שפה אחרת, אבל בכל זאת מאותה סגנון. זה ספר קטן ככה, מה איך... 
that in that mission? It's a small book. It's about 100 pages. What's the name? It's called Raziel Amal Akhar. The Angel Raziel. Turkey, the Raziel is in the Grassot. The Raz is a uh, uh, secret in Hebrew. And El is uh, God. So uh, it's secret. Uh, secret, yeah, secret of God. So it's a book. ואחר כך היו יכולים להיות עוד ספרים, אבל אנחנו לא יודעים עליהם. יש שמועות שהיו עוד ונעלמו. והספר הבא זה ספר של אברהם אבינו, שנקרא ספר יצירה. זה ספר שכבר אפשר ללמוד, יש על זה פירושים, שם יש סרטוטים, יש לנו זה באתר. Uh, we have it on our site. If you want, we can send it to you. Or by mail or by email or whatever. And after that, we will know the story of Abraham. Yeah, we have 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 the story of Abraham. Yeah, כי בסך הכל מה הבעיה? כל הספרים, מה שנקרא הקדושים, הם נקראים קדושים מפני שהם מנותקים מהעולם הזה. זה פירוש קדוש בעברית. נבדל. מנותק. כמו שתגיד לו, כמו שאומרים לכלה, את מקודשת. Just like when in a Jewish matrimony you say to the woman, את מקודשת לי, you are sanctified to me. So you like, you are secluded, you are separated not from now on, only to me, not to everybody else, you are detached from the rest of the world. זה הפירוש של מילה קדוש, קדוש. That's the meaning of the word קדוש, holy. אז כל הספרות שלנו, בכלל, כל הספרות, ש, שכאילו שייכת ליהדות. So all the, all the literature that seemingly belongs to the Judaism, זה בכלל, היא לא שייכת ליהדות, היא שייכת רק לקבלה. Belongs not to Judaism, but only to כי בעצם האנשים האלו רצו לספר לנו מה קורה מעל העולם הזה. Because, in fact, these people wanted to tell us what happens above our world. והביאו את זה בארבע לשזות. And they had, they used four languages, four, yeah, languages or terminologies to express it. לשון קבלה. There's the language of קבלה. שזה לשון הכי מדויק, לשון מדעי, מתמטי, פיזי. Which is the most scientific, mathematical, precise language. לשון של הלכות. There's the language of הלכות, which are laws, religious laws. מפני שהנשמה שלנו. מפני שהנשמה שלנו, הרצון לקבל את זה הכללי, הוא מחולק ל-620 רצונות פרטיים. ככה. איך לתקן כל רצון ורצון? זה נקרא לעשות הלכה, לעשות מצווה. So performing a precept means actually correcting each and every one of these specific desires of the 620 desires. And that's the actual meaning of performing or observing mitzvot. Not like people think you need to do something with your hands and legs. So it's a language of the laws. Now it's the language of the laws. Now it's the language or terminology of legends. סיפורים, כל מיני. Which are stories. גם כן לשם שייך ללשון של כל מיני נאומים ו... Also contains... מה שמדברים לילדים שם. Speeches and... הוכחות, כל מיני הנחות, לא יודע. ועוד לשון של התורה. And there's the language of the Bible. שזה כאילו מספר על העולם הזה. Which seemingly... אבל מדובר כולו ודאי על העולם העליון. ומה זה נובע? כי אנחנו נמצאים בנשמה המתוקנת, בגובה שנקראת עולם האצילות. כל 
כאן זה, שם זה המערכת שכולה כולה פועלת על העולם הזה, מפעילה את העולם הזה. That is where the system uh, that operates our world exists. וזה אנחנו. And that's us. אז. Oh, he wrote me. מי? As in we. לא חשוב. אז, וכאן זה מחסום. למדנו אתמול. And that's the barrier we learned about yesterday. מחסום. אין בעולם שלנו משהו שלא יורד מעולם האצילות. גם כוחות, גם חומר, גם פעולות, גם זמן, תנועה, מקום, כל מה שרק יכול להיות. ומה שנמצא כאן בעולם הזה, אז נקרא ענף, תוצאה. ממה שנמצא בעולם העליון. עכשיו, איך אני אספר למישהו משהו על עולם העליון? אני לוקח שמות מהעולם הזה של האנשים, של הדברים, של הסביבה. אני מתכוון על מה שנקרא כאן בעולם האצילות, אבל שירות אני לוקח מכאן, ואז אם אדם יודע רק העולם הזה, בשבילו זה כל הסיפור של בדורה שנמצא בעולם הזה, וגם אז בורא הוא גם מתאר כאדם גדול, אבל מי שמבין שמדובר על משהו מעבר לעולם הזה. אז הוא מחפש איפה זה נמצא למעלה. ואז מקובלים, קוראים אותו טקסט של תורה בצורה אחרת לגמרי. ואם אנחנו נפתח ספר הזוהר, אנחנו נראה ששם כתוב על הכריכה, שזה פירוש על התורה. אם אנחנו נדבר על זוהר אז אני אספר להם שזוהר הראשון שהיה נאבד, נעלם, הוא אותו חלק שהיה שייך לנביאים ולכתובים. There's a part of the Zohar that's been gone, that's been missing, and that part uh, refers to the prophets, to the, yeah, the writings of the prophets. All that we have today is the part of the Zohar that talks about the five books of Moses, and even that's incomplete. May I, if I can recall a question I had about half an hour ago, um, you know, as, as, as scientists, We, we look at a, an array of, of, of data, experimental data, and, and we try to develop a model to explain the data. And someone over here looks at the data a little differently and might develop a slightly different model. And someone over here develops a slightly different model. And they talk about it and argue about it, and they Maybe an experiment appears to separate this one from this one from this one. And, and they do those experiments, and, and they go on and on with this kind of thing. And at the moment, let's say in particle physics, this, there is the standard model that is used to, to uh, understand this. All models are only approximations of the truth. Uh, All models need uh, refinement, 
as, as we go along and, and learn more. Uh, and so the question that you know, I asked before about the Kabbalah versus the, the Vedas and the, and the Upanishads and in, in China, and in China they were writing about acupuncture a couple of thousand years before Abraham and the Japanese, etc. So there, these, these, they all have models of the creation of the universe. Would you be content if, if I suggested that this is the Kabbalah model of creation? But this is what they have I, I understand. Thousands of years. I understand. This is what they wrote. Yes. Those who do not uh, who do not learn and attain what they attain cannot understand what they're talking about. Yeah, but that's the way models are. You can't, you can't see uh, the end without going through the whole way. You cannot uh, prove uh, that it's either correct or incorrect. Yeah, that, that, that's the point. It seems to me all of these are approximations to the truth. And, 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 and the truth is always different than a model, and there, and in general, many different models come into existence, but it takes a lot of time to assimilate any of them, and I would be part of my difficulty uh, in reading in reading your book, for example, was that you seem to be presenting the Kabbalah as the truth, and it read like dogma. And whereas, 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 dogma means that you have to accept something uh, with eyes shut, otherwise you cannot advance. Yes, but but uh, but here, but, 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 no, 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 let me continue. Let me continue. The if if sorry, if you would shade your writing on the issue to imply that this is the Kabbalah model which has which is internally self-consistent it's internally self-consistent it explains a great body of experience and thinking and and the and it may be that other large groups of people have other models that also explain creation as we know it up till now. But that's, that's all. I mean, that, that's, that's the issue that we, we, in the science, generally that's what we have to do as scientists. Some people get stuck in the dogma of science, uh, but, but we should, I think, be open to the fact that there are other powerful models, useful models, and at the moment we may not be able to distinguish the predictability of one from another because we haven't evolved far. So, what would you recommend uh, for him? To, do, to explore other faiths? No, 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 no not, not at all. No, not at all. No, no, no. Uh, just be open. be open to these other possibilities and project it. It is, it is a model. It, it is, and it's a very useful model. So what does it mean to be open? To be open to... Don't come in with the fist closed, but come in with the fist open. When new thought comes into it means allow new thoughts to come into Kabbalah. Allow new, 
people come to me from my religion completely different. No one is limited in beginning to study. Right. The people might be immersed in their own religion or, or whatever. They're learning a lore. You're missing the point. You're not getting what we're saying. Listen, please. Listen. That's not the point. That's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. I will say it. I will say it as a, 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 another way. In physics, we had Newtonian mechanics. It was wonderful. It explained everything. We were totally content with it. It explained everything. It was so exciting. We were excited with it. Uh, there were people that got up and said poetry based on Newtonian mechanics. It was so, it filled everybody. We finally found out God does it. This was the feeling. Freud was influenced by it. Law cases were decided based on this. It was the thing. Darwin's theory of evolution was strongly enforced by the Newtonian model. And everybody believed it was right. And then came quantum physics. Now people don't accept new things when they come in. The first thing they react is, hit it out, we don't want it. We don't want it. It's not, it's wrong. Something's wrong. Even Einstein said, it stinks. Something's wrong. There's something wrong. And finally, after a while, the old guys die. They just die. And the new new guys come up and read the new stuff and they get excited. And suddenly we realize, wait, let me finish. We realize that quantum mechanics is now a new theory and it becomes very much encodes and encompasses. In my heart of hearts, I believe Kabbalah is an old theory. It's not, not a bad theory, but it needs to be encompassed with what we've learned about the world and how it works from many different cultures, including shamanic cultures and Native American cultures and Buddha. Can I, may I add, because, because it, I started this aspect, but, but the issue is here am I with, with the work I have been doing for the last 35 years. Um, with, we're trying to make psychoenergetics, experiments, that can integrate with uh, conventional and establishment science. It's very different. I have developed a model which I find is very useful in explaining it. I know I have not proven it. I know it is not the truth. It is a work in progress. It's a theory in progress. And it will take a long, long time to, to prove. This is because you attain reality from below upwards. But with insights from above. How do you even know that? You make a statement like that. To me, that's arrogant. No, 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 no. There is a reality. There is a world. We exist. Yes, It's got laws. I'm not. I'm not doing bad. They are independent of us. They. Whether we like it or not, they exist. And we are trying to open them up and, and study them. Right? It's a lawful universe, and we're trying to study it. This is why we try this direction. We don't know exactly how to go about it. That's how science advances, right? It is, but I, I, I was bringing up the point of a, of a model. And I tried to make it, in my own case, I have a model which I love absolutely dearly, as much as you love Kabbalah. But, but basically, I know it is just a model and I have not completed yet. Maybe not even in my lifetime. I can only say one thing. The knowledge that we have received, 
of how to advance from now to the point of equivalence of form with the Creator is a complete knowledge. We, it is for us to decipher it, to open it up. We don't know how to advance. It cannot be complete. In you, because you have to decipher and interpret it, yeah. which is nature. Exactly. Yeah. Just like it's science. Exactly. We're trying to do this all the time, and, and so it's it's how do we? I mean, the completeness of it. Uh, portions may still be hidden. And so, you know, I mean, but so, so it's, it's, it's the issue is, so I advance, I, I'm always in doubt. Yeah, right, and, and so the issue is, all I'm, all I'm saying is that sometimes the way you're expressing the Kabbalah is that it is the only way, and it is dogma. Which, 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 uh, I mean, we struggle with all the time. And I, in particular, with respect to, to establishment science. Because they think it's all it is. And there are, there are millions of physicists stuck thinking that's all there is. And you, and you face the same thing with those same people. They, they're, they're stuck in one view, and you have a better view. I agree we have a better view. And, and, but the point is there can be many better views. It doesn't feel um, with the people that he encounters or the students that come Kabbalah uh, uh, has changed tremendously through uh, materialistic uh, psychology. It's changed through, uh, through uh, opinions of contemporary physics. Uh, the globalization processes and all that do induce many changes. Here he's just trying to explain something very narrow in a very uh, limited uh, period of time. So he can't do it anymore. If we stay all connected, I think that we can create something that is compl a completely new evolution. I would agree. I would agree. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but is that true? Yes. 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 Some Kabbalah, Egyptian Kabbalah, there's Christian Kabbalah in Europe. It, the utilization of Kabbalah has, has many facets to it. It's because these things uh, are, are later on connected to many, many things. He's just explaining the essence without connecting it to, to anything. I think everybody knows that. Uh, how the Renaissance began in Europe. Europe was in the Dark Ages. And people with uh, new uh, opinions, new views, came to a very small group in Italy. And that prompted the, uh, the, the, the evolution uh, uh, in everything that humanity deals with uh, even today. It started from nothing more than a few dozen people who thought that 
There has to be a breakthrough of a, of a new kind of thinking. Uh, from the perspective of Kabbalah, I think that this is an essential today. Uh, as a part of, of the in integral science. That's why I think uh, what Kabbalah to be a part, and even a small part, uh, of the union of all these new things that come together. It's only now uh, surfacing. Mm -hmm. It'll If you actually look at, I mean, realize this wasn't the exact point that Rob Lightman was making. Mm -hmm. If you look at the specific mm -hmm. philosophers who mm -hmm. mm -hmm. triggered the Renaissance, mm -hmm. uh, the Neoplatonic mm -hmm. philosopher, Giordano Bruno, and a number of others, mm -hmm. they all mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, went secretly to study with the Kabbalists of the Earth and ended up writing books that were considered heretical precisely because they incorporated uh, Kabbalistic teachings mm -hmm. in, in uh, Christian form. So that mm -hmm. alone yeah. suggests yeah. that yeah. it's worth yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Even that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, some of the, uh, some of the, some of the uh, Christian liturgy from the Middle Ages has incorporated Kabbalistic, um, acrostic poetry in the beginning who letters of the... Who did that? I'm sorry, who did that? Some, some of the, some of the uh, Catholic liturgy from the Middle Ages okay, has incorporated uh, Kabbalistic liturgical theme. It's a standard in Hebrew prayer books. The beginning letters, oftentimes, the, the pew team, as you know, we incorporate the beginning letters of, of Kabbalistic uh, sequences, and that tradition was actually brought into, secretly brought into some of the Catholic liturgy, so that some of the uh, some of the Catholic liturgy to this day, the beginning letters in Latin actually reflect Kabbalistic. So that's alone suggests that it, it's at least worth. Oh, absolutely. You know, I don't know. I'm some time to... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that, that's not the point that I was trying to argue. It was just to be open to the larger perspective. What you're saying, what you're saying is that, regardless, let's just assume for a moment that Kabbalah is everything and the only thing and everything else is wrong. Let's make that assumption. What you're saying is it doesn't matter whether it is or not, that there will be no way to communicate <coughs> what Kabbalah is if you turn around and start by telling everyone in a dogmatic fashion, okay, this is it, period. You're not saying one way or the other what truth is, you're just saying the moment that you come across as dogmatic, that closes the door immediately and says, and then when they say forget it, correct. And if you think of it as a model, and you project it as a model, a very effective model from all the data. That is much better because because it's open then. People can accept this is the best we know on this path, and this path is, is appreciated by large, large numbers. It's a good path. What we're speaking about is a technique of communication. Yes. That's all. And if you don't mind my saying so, uh, I've been trying to communicate the same message through already published literature by major scholars in the United States to Rob over the last few days. And we've had some very heavy conversations that mirror the conversations well, that you have had. That's good to see because I, I read the book you sent me and I and it jumped out at me and it bothered me. Yeah, I have this. I was going to, since that came up, I was going to say in a private conversation, but it's, is that it's, it's strictly a PR? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's not a question of the actual context. Well, it is, but there's something else here. We have to communicate from here as well as from here. What I hear is mostly from here and nothing from here. And the way that I, when I go into places, 
I don't always listen to what goes in here. I listen to what goes in here. And that's what I look for. And when I hear it, then I begin to pay attention. And until I hear it, I don't pay attention. Now, I'm human. I am, I am, I am the man. I am the human being. I am all humans. That's how we are. We listen here, and if it hits here, we'll then listen here. But if it doesn't get here, it's like if you gotta feed this before this becomes a way. You gotta feed this before this becomes a way. Well, Fred, the reason I was gonna say it in private, uh, but then didn't, it was because I I, I disagree with that. I, I no, you may. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel that it's coming from that. I very much feel it's coming from her. You do. That's fine. And I, and I think so the heart is in the right place. I think it is too. I, I don't that, disagree with except that. Except that in in in. in, in Certain things in the conversation, and certain yeah. things in the reading, and the just reading, yeah, that's are, what I'm talking are like about. chalk on a blackboard well, that where it really. But that's why great. I say it's a PR problem. Yeah. And well, it has to do with, and I think it comes from the fact that after Kabbalah having been basically developed in isolation from the world over many centuries in a Jewish context, and now it's coming out into the world. And there, and there is not a, a refined diplomatic language for presenting this material. For example, I don't think it's possible to, uh, right off the bat, discuss even in a even in a group of Jews, let alone in a mixed group, the question of the Jewish role in history in an easy way. I mean, that's yeah, just about the hottest topic that you could possibly bring up. And, 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 and I don't think, for example, Rob necessarily you know, know how deft a politician he is, but I would assume that almost nobody could bring that up on the first day of a meeting of a brand new mixed group of people. But that's the kind of thing that requires an enormous knowledge of the people you're dealing with and great tact and sensitivity and so on and so forth. When you're dealing with a system, in which there are thousands of variables, right. there are in a sociological issue like this, you, it takes millennia, many millennia to gather enough data to even be able to make a crude model. Well, I think one thing that I would say on the positive side is that without making any claims as to the specialness of Kabbalah, that as long as uh, the material has a chance to present itself, and I think this is what Rob was saying, yeah. that it, it, it has an opportunity to uh, uh, stand on its own two feet. Uh, eventually, uh, people will relate to it because they discover it for themselves. It's worth it. have a chance to judge for themselves whether it speaks to them or not. It's, it's a great path. And, 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 and people adhere to it. There's another Kabbalist center here in, in the United States, in Los Angeles, for example. Uh, Rev Berg, who, and uh, Huda Berg, and uh, his followings and people. And he's a very good writer. He writes in a way that gets to you here. Very popular kind of Kabbalah. Very popular now in America. They're making, I'm sure, big success. And uh, this is a, a skill. I don't know where he got it from. But he's a good writer. I met him personally, and I don't like it. I like you very much more. You, I feel connection with him. I don't. And so that's why I talk to you this way, because I feel connected with you to talk to you this way. I wouldn't say this to him. <coughs> but uh, his writing is really good. I mean, it's fabulous. Your writing is for academics only. It does not hit. It doesn't explain. It doesn't get to the heart of the matter. And that's what I want to see this come up. I want to see whether it's you or your students, it doesn't matter because it's not egoic. It's a matter of getting this stuff out. And we want to get the people. We want them to understand. We want them to feel. We want them to understand this. I don't know how you want to put it, what words you want to do, but it can't be so theoretical that it's like changing quantum physics to the masses. You can't do it. I don't want to bring it to the masses. Why? Because they don't have questions about 
a question about the they, That's where I disagree. I need as much they do. Wait, 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 wait a minute, because I, I will when explain. When I go on to the audience and speak, I hear thousands of questions. Emails come in to me. They want to know these answers. The questions you're raising is what they people want to know. You people are not stupid. They really do feel these things. They're, they're, not, they're waking up now. We need to recognize that in the world. And if we don't, we're making a big mistake. We can't be secular anymore. It's not time to only teach those who are worthy of learning. We have to bring it out to the world. In my opinion, that's what I feel. That's what I feel in my heart. That's what I'm all about. May I answer? Sure. If a person wants to fill up his life with mundane worldly pleasures, not with uh, an encounter, a meeting with the Creator, then, of course, you will find an answer at the Berg Institute. That bad. Why? <laughs> <laughs> <Why? laughs> because he's taught how to do good business, <laughs> how to find a good spouse, <laughs> how to find good sex, <laughs> how to keep healthy, <laughs> how to tie red strings, <laughs> and holy waters. <laughs> And so, so, the agree. so the purpose is a mundane purpose. I agree. Kabbalah, lo Kabbalah has nothing to do with it. It is only above the burning. If a person has a point in the heart, the beginning of the soul, then it can help a person develop it. But it is all above this world. I'm not going to lie to people Kabbalah can help them fix up their life. I agree, I'm not saying that. Of course not. And I think the issue is not that at all. The issue is that every once in a while, in the communication, something is given which is dogmatic, saying this is the way and this other possibility you suggested can't possibly exist because we know that all I'm saying is that that isn't the right way to communicate that's all, that's all we're saying it's a really we're talking about a communication issue and you, you, you can you can do yeah, you can do I mean the science what you're what you're trying to do is the is the right direction and I honor that you want to to do this at, at this level it's an important level <laughs> First of all, he thanks you very much for all these comments. And, and he will listen to them again and again using the recordings. <coughs> He's still not sure that he can feel exactly what you're trying to convey. <coughs> because for the past 30 years he's only been studying and was immersed <laughs> only in that, so it's very hard for him to come out of it. <laughs> if you come to Israel, <laughs> he'll show you places where people learn, <laughs> caves, and, and how much it, it narrows a person down. And, and he hopes that through the connection with you guys to turn Kabbalah into something more open. But alone he doesn't think he can do it. Okay, well, they, I, certainly, uh, certainly, certainly I don't know. He feels that he just doesn't have that sense. Well, it, it is my feel. Is that is that his heart? When I feel his heart is is different. Is not so dogmatic as some of the things you say and write, and, and therefore I feel okay to to say this to you uh, because I know. The, at some level that, that, that you don't mean to do it this way. But now let me say, I have written a new book on the new work and the work of the earlier two books 
And my, I tried to do it for the general public. My daughter read, and she couldn't read it all the way through. And she said, we have to write a book about the book, Dad. So I understand the problem. I believe one other problem is that for decades, has had people come to him saying, teach us what's right. Yes. As opposed, or produce a book and people read it and say, well, of course, this is correct and now teach me more. And now we're talking about a difference between unsolicited and solicited then. Correct? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, you're saying that the unsolicited are going to look at it as dogma. The solicited say, well, of course it's right. Yes. They already have, are pointed in that direction. The unsolicited say, well, this is saying that this is the way it is, therefore it's dogma, and I don't need to read another page. I mean, it's something like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Because, because many people can be lost at that part of the path. What is the solution here? Well, uh, I know, I'll use an example of myself. Um, even though, as a young man, I wrote poetry and could deal with things at that level, most of my life has been with science and writing things from that level. And I find it very difficult to not use equations to do, as a shorthand to describe what I mean. Uh, and I use it, it's very hard to try to do this. And I've tried the recent book to do it without equations. One chapter I, I just had to use some. But, but it incredibly difficult. And, and I think of myself as a reasonable communicator if I try. So, um, and they're part of it is habits. And, uh, but can't you back into a problem here? Can't you get into a situation? You have to limit it somewhere because you back right back into dogma if you start trying to write the book as comparative analysis between, okay, we want to compare this with this with this. Isn't it enough just to say, okay, this is the Kabbalist Bible of creation? Yes, and I think that that is, and, and if you could adhere to it, you adhere to it, and the, and the writing is internally self-consistent with respect to being the Kabbalistic model of creation. That, I, I have to, I have the to way I would do this would be to say this is a model of creation. It's an ancient model. It's based on the wisdom of thousands of years. We can compare it to the thinking of this, how the Chinese medical system mm -hmm. or the, how they see mm -hmm. the universe created mm -hmm. to yin and yang. You can compare it to this. And in making these comparisons, you're opening the door. Mm -hmm. opening mm -hmm. the door. Yeah. This way, you can see, te teach teaching and then always go back and remember that your audience is Chinese, Islam, and they only know Chinese and Islam. They don't know you. But you compare it to them, and you, by metaphor, compare, compare, compare. Always going back to where they're always going back to when you're teaching, remembering the suffering that they're in because they're limited. You're the light giver, so you have to understand that. And you also have to understand that you are only giving your light as you see it through your particular way of saying that by your humility and your heart giving will awaken in them the same spark in your heart that they that you have your heart it will awaken in them that spark but only if you can do this you can't just teach it by itself you'd have to always metaphorize it's like doing magic you can't you, if you do a magic trick for somebody you can do it but unless you get their attention first they will not see the trick they won't even know how to be entertained by the trick they won't know what it is and I'm not saying this is a trick I'm just simply saying that you have to get to where they're at you have to understand that it's a psychology it's a when you open your heart that way to them they will respond to you they'll hear you does this make sense I have to interrupt here, not as a translator, though. Um, you've all received the book containing the worlds beyond. Yep. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether you've read it or not. I've read it all. Um, this is a book 
and that's why you can say that you feel his heart, because what he's presented so no, far no, I is feel his very because I feel his heart. Is that right? Well, and stuff. it's not because of the reading. Um, In fact, the reading what a I'm little put me off. Yeah, what, what, what I'm trying to say is, um, in that specific book, um, you can really get to to the emotional side, to the um, side that experiences, to the heart of, of uh, Kabbalah. Um, also, in our lessons, we always divide it into two parts. The first part is always, we call it inner work. It, it is written more in terms of attaining the worlds beyond. It is more about the personal experiences that a person undergoes in the process of studying Kabbalah. And in that part of the lesson, uh, uh, a person is always in, in states of doubts and questions and uh, various ideas come into mind. And then you take all of it, and in the second part of the lesson, uh, you talk about the structure of the upper world and Olam Silut and this world and that and, and the, the, the vessel and, and the Tzimtzum and all that. But that is actually talking about the same thing but from a completely emotional uh, perspective as opposed to the second part of the lesson which is the more intellectual part of the lesson. This way you cover the entire human being and we do that in every lesson. It's an essential part that is the basic I mean, that's a bed, bed indeed is a good, a good style, but I found the book simplistic and, and redundant. And, and I was fascinated by this that we, we have talked about. It. The, 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 and, it, and it may be it's just a different audience, but the fact is that, that the, the book which I was, I was happy to have gone through it. I underlined a very great deal and I had things in the columns in saying no, <laughs> etc. But, but uh, it, it's just I, the audience that, that that book is for is a relatively um, unawake audience. Yes, and I, and I yeah. realized that's yeah. what you intended it for. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. But it was within that that mm -hmm. I reflected what, what could I... In order to awaken. Yes, exactly. And, 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 uh, and that's why I thought of it the way I did and the things that I said. But, and, and when I thought of the residue, okay, how, how is it that what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about, how can I interface with this? What, where did we meet? Where do we not meet? Um, and where we did not meet was the times when I thought it was dogmatic. And, and, uh, and so I think the things we've talked about, to treat it as a, as a model, albeit a very rich model. Just as in conventional physics, the standard model is a very rich model, but it's probably wrong. In detail, in detail, not everywhere. But in detail. So. We had in mind to have lunch at one o'clock. And we had in mind, <laughs> everyone's ready, I think we had one.